So hello everybody, this is the Centralized Dave with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hello David. Doing another podcast. Uh, we've chosen certainly the right time. There's a lot that happened over the past week. And we also most likely are not going to be alone. Um, Isabel is likely to going to join us at some point. Curtis, you always start with Bitcoin, so go on. Yeah, we finally have broken down here after the consolidation around 19 to 20k we had the ftx contagion probably the worst time i can think of in crypto in five years the worst uh, number of people in pain and losing money so we've had BlockFi has uh become insolvent and insolvent uh ftx is down and we don't know what's going to happen next so there's contagion and brand and it's just a, it's just a mess um so we're going lower how much lower we don't know i think this morning we hit around 15 again or 15 five mm -hmm. so looking bad um great buying opportunity it's probably the last flush out but it could put us in a bear market further i don't know um i know you have some interesting news to add to that mm -hmm. um but um pretty horrible uh, retail investors are getting damaged um pretty bad so not a nice time to be in crypto <clears throat> well maybe it's a nice time to get into crypto um so first of all By guys yeah. this is the second time what happened to me the same literally the same thing King down is ascending which i've been calling this this is an ascending which it has to break down and we have to go below <laughs> the yearly low and i've been calling for it since like mid-August, to be honest, whole September, half of October, and on last pot on, on our last last podcast, I capitulated and said that okay, like this is probably not happening. Hello, Isabel, and welcome. Hello. So uh, this is this is Isabel, the uh, German from Germany, and she's just joined us. Uh, I'm sure some of you know her. I capitulated the last podcast and just after my capitulation it did break down so I was right indeed like all the rest all the September October I was right that this really has to break this really or it's likely to break down and now what I see what is really interesting um, I see a couple of things actually that are really interesting so number one thing is that this does look to me like in contrary, the opposite, the descending wedge actually. This does look to me like a descending wedge here. And and on weekly even, it's also seen. Yeah, it's also seen on weekly. And if I'm correct here, but that would also mean that we actually are going to break up um, not that far to the future. That would actually mean that 27, even 28,000 Bitcoin, which doesn't seem like realistic to be honest so i'm conflicted right. about this call i'm really conflicted what i see maybe it's going to be forming longer maybe it's going to be descending more maybe it's going to now retest back the 20 or so and maybe then it's going to go further into my area my area has not yet been hit and that is also my problem because technically like we closed weekly in the middle of kind of nowhere and um like like it should be at least my area now um but it but the, the thing is also that i don't think it's gonna happen yet i don't think it's gonna happen this month i don't think we're gonna go below fifteen thousand this month actually the reason why i think so is is mainly this one here so first of all so finally we uh destroyed lots of long leverage like without us really uh, noticing it there was a lot of longer leverage coming during the summer and and early uh, autumn like people were again doing the same like people just were losing the patience i think and they were like just uh, starting to, to buy even on margin even on leverage and we flashed it we flashed it somewhat and most importantly there was there was a spike in shorting. There was a heavy spike in the funding fees. This spike is is very comparable to the last uh, last summer in the May, which spiked when we went to 30 and then 30 was a bottom for a year. 
or this spike is comparable to the corona crash which spiked on 12th of march which was 4300 bitcoin and we only the following day we made a low the corona low so this spike in, in uh, also the sheer amount of people shorting mm. this is like this spike is actually i think very bullish i think it's going to make us not to go below 15000 not this month i think it's going to have to well i don't know what's going to have to happen but maybe even not the whole year the, the rest of 2022 maybe um so isabel would you like to uh, add anything to the bitcoin yeah it's an interesting extra extrapolation well of course you cannot see it one to one but as you guys know i'm still bearish on bitcoin and the whole market that hasn't changed even though of course um there might be a rebound uh, but right now i i don't think we probably um won't have a very uh, big rebound in uh, in bitcoin september 15 that's correct okay, so um yeah well as you know that was the moment that lehman brothers collapsed uh -huh. and i think it's just kind of an interesting thought experiment interesting extrapolation to kind of uh, relate you know this breakdown of ftx in the crypto market to the breakdown of lehman brothers during the great financial crisis uh, i mean of course it's not one-to-one -one, but um it's like it's been it was one of the biggest exchanges in the crypto market like lehman brothers as well and you can see that from uh, september um 15 2008 mm -hmm. um the time frame until it reached the low it was around six to seven months um actually it reached low in march Although exactly. crypto is faster, don't forget that. It's of way course, faster. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. of course. So it's just like an extrapolation, a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, exactly. March, six to seven months, and it was a correction of around 50%. So, mm -hmm. um, well, and now maybe we can go back to the Bitcoin chart. I'm guess the screenshot is a little bad but i entered a um trend line trend line of the bottoms uh-huh yeah so that trend was line below ten thousand. yeah exactly so that just leaves for me still the possibility open that we might actually go below 10k well it's just a thought experiment and um it aligns with my bearish stance for mm -hmm. the midterm and i wanted to share this with you guys yeah yeah that's an interesting interesting comparison mm. and both um so the lehman shock was triggered by a contagion and counterparty risk which is exactly what's happening with ftx right mm. in 2008 it was it was uh real estate industry the real estate market and um mortgage securities that were wrapped into these sort of derivatives that nobody understood and nobody understood the risk and that's what caused the banking collapse um mm nobody knew what anyone there was no proof of reserves so to speak and so we're seeing exactly that now we don't know how many bitcoin ftx has we don't know how many bitcoin crypto.com has maybe they're sharing the same coins and maybe they're hypothecated so you have this game suddenly unraveling where nobody knows how much collateral people have and it's very similar to um what happened with the the mortgage crisis uh the the back securities in 2008 and then your chart interesting yeah, yeah so yeah, exactly. so if i should now sum up like all three of our brains into one like a call so i think that uh also my area it's going to be sweet victory if it ever gets hit but given the amount of short leverage coming at the moment amount of uh, people like being defensive and people expecting it uh, I don't think it can happen right now. I don't think it's realistic to happen this month, to be honest with you completely. Mm -hmm. And I'm even I'm doubtful whether it can happen in December, to be completely honest. But mm -hmm. uh, and uh, given that this is this does look like a forming descending wedge, then another step could be if that's 
it's on weekly, so it can be forming for another month, to be honest. So also that would signify actually kind of a bounce to 19 to 20, actually a retest of 20K. If mm -hmm. I have right. to, if I look at it from this perspective, so, and I agree with Isabel, actually, it does look like, a, it does look like a, a 08, 09 in crypto. Right. Um, and that, that said, remember that Ethereum hit $80 in the last bear market. It hit $80 and we're holding 1230 as we speak in the worst scenario possible. FTX collapsing, you can't think of anything worse. It was the most famous company and growing company. So uh, I think we're going to go lower as well. I think we're going to drop 20 to 30 percent more. But um, the market's quite resilient. The mm -hmm. actual price is... I mean, a lot of coins are holding up, um, but the exchanges now is almost an invalid um, business model. Like, what are we going to do without exchanges? Are retail going to come back? No, are people no. Gonna, yeah, I will tell you what are going to do. Yeah. Um, I will tell yeah. you what we're going to do. We're going to we are all going to use DEXs like we've always exactly. sensed. Exactly. We will. And uh, yeah, you you. Ask me so many times, Kurt, is that what is what good is there or what do we what utility is there on Ethereum? So like mm -hmm. it's been all of you know all the time around us. Like the DEXs are super important and wouldn't have existed without the smart contract platforms. Yeah, I just wanted to add um because uh, there's many people, you know, on Twitter thinking that oh this is the end of crypto and it's not gonna recover. But and indeed that's exactly I the, the time I agree when with yeah, I agree with David that it just shows uh, the importance of uh, real DeFi and, of course, also regulation of CeFi because basically they're like unregulated banks. But DeFi has done quite well so far and there are still a lot of disadvantages. But I think, I hope people get more aware of the opportunities there. And that's an also yep. excellent point saying that everybody, people think this is the end of crypto. That's mm. also why I really think that this month it's it's in, it's it's not very likely, if likely at all, we go below fifteen thousand, and maybe mm. not even the next month, maybe the rest of twenty twenty two actually. Mm. So, uh, Curtis, do we want to switch to um, DXY or S and P five hundred? Well, start with inflation. Let's let's frame it in terms let's of the inflation go. print. So, okay, so. Uh, Thursday was a big surprise and actually a, a, a happy surprise. So the this is the October, um, up to October, the CPI report came in for headline inflation at 7.7%. You can see it was, I think, 8.2 or 8.3 in September. So uh, the market had its biggest day in two years. The S&P rose uh, 5%. I think NASDAQ, I think 6 or 7%. So we finally might have got a top in short-term inflation. You can see the chart here. Uh, it was 9.1, I think, in June. And we've had four months of declining headline inflation. Um, the other good news is the core inflation. So yeah. we had um, gasoline fell, uh, food fell, and very good. services yes. fell, okay? shelter like rent went up uh but the issue with that so basically the shelter increase was a, a large part of why inflation was as high as it was um and shelter is a lagging indicator people will have their uh leases renewed every year or two right so there's some uh lag time between the economy slowing and rents coming down so there's, I'm quite confident we'll be below the current number in uh, the November. So December 10th, we get the November report. Mm -hmm. if, if it's below 7.4%, it's very good for the short-term uh, risk-on environment. And yet and another think, argument. Yeah, because the next Fed meeting, the next Fed meeting is after this, the November update. So we'll have one more month of potential lower rates before the Fed makes a decision. Um, and I think it'll be below 7.4% because I think rents will start falling and the others will, will continue to fall. Um, 
there's even signs that we're seeing some deflationary pressure with some assets because very quickly we're getting some job losses, slowing of the economy. So it's all good. Um, potentially, if we get below 7.4%, of course, if inflation comes out above eight in, for November, we're in trouble in big time again. So that's a very important date, December 9th or 10th, I think. Um, yeah. So the market rallied. We had the DXY fall to 106, okay, which so is amazing. Maybe let's um, switch to DXY, maybe, and let's yeah. talk about all of us. About yeah, uh, the market responded very quickly. D this is the US dollar versus a basket of currencies. It fell. So the top seems to have been at the 112, 113 in the short term. Um, I hope in, in, in forever. I don't just hope in for a short term, please. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, so the uh, 10 year yield fell below 4%, it went to 3.8. So the bond traders also said this is very good news. Um, and uh, as those yields fell, that was good for stocks as well. Um, gold rallied, you might wanna show uh, the gold mm -hmm. chart. Gold is up, it's inversely to the strength of the US dollar, it's an inverse mm -hmm. response. And um, so we finally had a bit of a relief in terms of US dollar strength. Isabel, would you like to follow to uh, with DXY and gold? Yeah, well, I agree with Curtis. I don't have any specific thoughts on that. It's um, It definitely looks like um, the DX, uh, the dollar has topped for now. So I can't imagine it going higher again. It's broken out of this channel. So um, I, could imagine that there will be some sideways chop, you know, mm -hmm. and um, who knows, stocks and the DXY can even de decouple in some interesting way. It doesn't mean, to me, it doesn't mean because the dollar won't good point. grow up further that stocks definitely have to go up. Yes, uh, good luck anymore. Yeah, but I'm I'm midterm bullish on gold, though. Yeah. Uh Okay, so you know, in times of crisis, and um, gold can do well. So for gold, I have a bit more positive outlook than for stocks in the mid term. Yes, right. mid to longer term. So if you want to combine some of your two thousand nine analysis, Isabel, if you remember after Lehman shock, mm -hmm. uh, the a global financial crisis from two thousand nine to two thousand eleven, gold went to its all time high. Oh, and yeah. you might want to, you might want to look for that maybe later next okay. year if we do get a crack a, a bottoming let's say yeah. stocks or, or crypto you know, everything sells off a bit more you might see gold recover the second half of 2023 or, or rather strengthen uh yeah. 2023 2024 um absolutely that's a very good point indeed to mm -hmm. look back at that yeah Although we have the 0809 in crypto and gold does not really react on crypto, right? Gold cares about the the, yeah. uh, the stocks. Um, uh, I think that the gold is going to be good short for now, actually. I, mm -hmm. I think there was also a lot of supply increase with the new deposits that went public in Africa. But, and also, now when uh when russian rubble ruble is covered partially with gold uh the west is going to want to shoot down the price of the gold mm -hmm. and uh, also technically it just makes sense there is a gap this red line is a freaking gap here left and tested so I think gold is going to be, I would wait, like Isabel uh, just uh, uh, suggested, and Curtis as well, I would wait for at least mm. this area to get hit. Well, actually, we are in the area already, but this area is wider. So mm. I think gold might be an interest. This is not the financial advice, but it might be an interesting short. Uh, that's where I would actually look because should i be correct should it go from 1800 to 1350 it's 25 percent and that's from the commodity that's not bad at all because commodities are not very volatile as for the dxy i also agree with isabel that 
this is my fat line. I'll just it's it's beautiful that uh, it got respected. It got even retested. Like I couldn't have mm. been happier, man. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's good. Good luck. And um, if I'm if also my uh, technical view is any worth, then uh, not only we're gonna have this month red candle, which it looks like now very likely. Also, mm. last month was red, so that call was also correct from my side. And then this would be not just a top for now, but top forever. If mm. my if my long-term macro reading of the situation is correct, then this was just a retest of the top. It was nothing really bullish, that, that much bullish. It was just, and it's actually down from here. Down in steps, of course, as, as Isabel suggested, some sideways chop. Mm. And Curtis is gonna ask me why, and Curtis is gonna ask me which currencies are gonna go up, and I'm gonna tell him that I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Euro could be one of them because hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Euro. Okay, okay. It's been hit so hard Euro. already. No not, way, man. Not the only Euro. because we use Euro with Isabel, so we we uh, you know personally hope for it. But there will be no Euro in ten years, I think. They won't. Have, there'll be no such thing. We are talking now about DXY for the upcoming like mm -hmm. five years, so maybe ten years is too too far ahead to look. Uh, so I agree I would, with Curtis. It's probably I would refrain countries. from making Sorry. calls ten years mm -hmm. ahead at the moment. I would refrain for myself at least. Mm. That's just too far ahead for me. No, it yeah. just yeah, Europe. The euro will fail when Europe starts to fail as a as you know as a community. I think economically but but i still there's still the possibility that you know the euro will fail for a couple of countries you know like italy spain etc they might um, leave the euro and yeah. it might even stay a little bit longer with the you know the northern european countries but whether that succeeds in the long term i'm, I'm not very optimistic either i don't make long-term predictions but one that i would be confident about would be us dollar outperforming the euro but i understand your chart that's an interesting chart and that uh, I didn't know that. Like my personal Me hopes either. aside, like I'm not gonna be calling because of my personal hopes, but I do think that Euro is going to go up a lot and uh, in the, to the the next year even. <laughs> and the reason <laughs> also why I think so is that there was a severe crisis this year, and it looks so bearish for Euro, and that's that's the that's the also reasoning behind that why why it's gonna go up because it looks so bad <laughs> right i'm sharing you the dxy composition chart it might be interesting to put into your slides later and it shows the, the breakdown oh this is a good one this is a good one so it's all about the euro i would say the dxy it's all about i didn't realize euro. that it was 57 percent. and yeah i am actually bullish but personal hopes aside i think that it's it was severely 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 bad this year and given how bad it was in the europe it held it held very well to be honest yeah on the last but not least let's mention that cryptocurrencies are at the moment leaving the exchanges in a rapid pace you can see from 7th of november uh coin glass shows that there were 2.1 million bitcoins in exchanges and that number dropped to 1.9 million which is the lowest i don't know maybe than it's ever been right according mm -hmm. to coin glass i would say but and the situation is that people not necessarily that people don't want to sell the bitcoins or have them ready to sell to be sold but just the, the the trust in the centralized exchanges is naturally in an all-time low and now also many people that never before tried the dexes are now going to try the dexes and do the swaps. yes could be uh bitcoin ethereum and and DeFi like dexes right like coins you trust and then a process that you trust meaning you know not your keys not your coins and uh self-custody uh, most people are too lazy to do that and they don't understand they don't even understand the risks mm -hmm. um a lot most of these exchanges they're not insured right so if the if the business goes out there's no insurance whereas if you have a bank in germany or a, a slovakia canada if your bank goes down they'll guarantee a certain amount of the money on deposit 
they call it FDIC insurance or, um, but you don't have that with FTX. FTX, your money was not insured. And so people lose everything. Um, people need to educate themselves on this. They're just too lazy, to be honest, or they're misrepresented by uh, YouTubers. The other thing is, you know, pe Bitcoiners have been talking about uh, hypothecated Bitcoin and trying to uh, take their coins off the exchanges to prove how, how rare the supply is. And I assume that's similar with other coins in the market, and but it could be an interesting test. Um, That's what I was going to say, that now all the centralized exchanges are going to be tested. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I think all of the centralized exchanges are now panicking in their internal structure and actually doing the accounting, like, actually, do we even have enough? Like, really? Like, right. I think that there is lots of panic, lots of stress in all centralized exchanges around the world. And I think some of them might proved to be insolvent as well, but I don't think large exchanges, at least not at the moment, because uh, I think like immediately past this shock, uh, like every, everybody's going to be super careful, defensive. Like it's usually, these things usually happen when people don't expect them. That's what I'm saying. Right. So I think so, yeah, forget a bit. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that uh, maybe three weeks ago, it was crypto that was stable and stock market legacy stock market was rocky mm -hmm. and then we had the reverse we had a mm -hmm. rally in stocks and some good data and a strengthening legacy market and then crypto crashed so it, it, it completely flipped over which was interesting shows you can't predict what's going to happen but now we have in the short term a, a more stable global market in the, in the next mm -hmm. three months let's say or six months and then crypto is risky. The other thing is, remember that crypto market cap is tiny. It's not affect. It's not going to affect. It does affect sentiment, and it gets a lot of PR headlines. But it's not. It doesn't affect your average um, person running a, a stock account. Um, crypto is what eight hundred billion dollars now. It's not even one percent. It's less. It's half of half of a percent. So it's not going to have the same impact that a Lehman shock would. Right. That's not going to be a trigger. Um, yeah. far more impactful is whether the US dollar weakens or bond mm -hmm. rates stay reasonable or inflation. Those are the main issues we need to look at, not crypto, um, in terms of global health and global stability. Maybe let's wrap this up and uh, let's perhaps uh, make a plan like uh, the next podcast we'd like to do also depends on the events. If there is so much happening, we'll do it sooner. But if there isn't, I think that somewhere between uh, end of November or like the very beginning, the first week of December, it's going to be good time right. for podcast. Uh, will you join us, Isabel? We love to have you. I hope so. I definitely hope so. Yes. The the new inflation report is not, is not going to be out. So, By then, right. Uh, right. But I will bring you again some of the indicators that I sometimes look at uh, or related to crypto. So what do you expect to bring Isabel or Curtis, would you like to say? Really depends on how. The same theme, just keep it consistent, is how macro is dominant over crypto um, mm. and influential. So just stay with a macro theme. I'll look at stocks, I'll look at inflation and look at... Um, we'll probably have some data coming out. Even if we don't get the inflation uh, mm. print, we'll probably get inflation numbers, maybe jo some jobs updates. And, and I'll just sort of summarize that. Okay, so uh, see you next time. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.